Muggins! Hey, what's up everybody? I am Jay Moss and this is another mix tip, mix tip number two of, I don't know how long I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do it as long as I can. Maybe I'll do like a thousand. I don't know, but, or like maybe I'll get to two. <laughs> this wouldn't be the last mix tip. Um, Anyway, today we're going to talk about how we can use as many plugins as we want with zero CPU hit. We're going to be mixing a band called The Rival Cycle, which features uh, Bradley on vocals, who you may know from other bands like Amorosa. This is an amazing band. Everyone in the band rips, so it was a super easy mix. We tracked the whole thing here. It came out awesome. I'm super psyched on it, and I want to show you guys kind of what we did. Um, Cubase recently came out with a new version, version 9.5, which does happen to be the most recent version. In this more recent version of Cubase, there is a new feature which I love personally, and it lets us use as many plugins as we want with no CPU hit whatsoever. There's some pros to this, there's a couple cons, but overall it's a huge, huge bonus to what was already my favorite recording platform. So I'm excited to show you guys what I'm up to, I'm excited to show you how we can use this creatively and really tailor things part to part. It's super easy. And it's a kind of a game changer. If I'm being honest, it's kind of a game changer. Let's, uh, let's look into this. Let's dive in further, shall we? Okay, so here we are in the Rival Cycle EP project. Uh, anyone who's seen my mixing course already will uh, know what everything is, since I always color code everything the same. Uh, we've got drums, bass, guitars, vocals. Um, and what I want to show you is this really cool trick I'm doing to effectively do whatever I want with plugins and take up basically no CPU. Okay, so what I want you guys to look out for would be this little icon right here. When you see that icon, that indicates that I have uh, used direct offline processing on this region. And I want to show you guys how slick this is. So to access that, just hit F7. When you do, this window will come up. And when it does, you can go bonkers adding as much stuff onto this region as you want and independently process effects on the region. Now, this has been able to be done before. Um, every DAW sort of has this function, but I don't think any of them have implemented it as elegantly as Cubase has with this new destructive yet non-destructive version. Uh, so let me show you how this works. I obviously have RVox running here. I'm also, big ups to Bradley from Amorosa for having just a super great voice. Uh, easy to mix, easy to work with. Uh, super talented dude. Okay, let's add, let's, <laughs> sorry Bradley, let's f*** your voice up. Let's add some stuff. Uh, let's add some distortion. Boom. Driver. Boom. So as you can see, we're going to go hard here. And see how the waveform changes? Let me zoom in. Uh, this waveform changes. This is being written into the actual file, but Cubase keeps track of everything you do in this window as pertains to this region or any region. So let's listen. Killer. So let's say like we liked that effect and we just thought it was, so if I was going to use that effect here, personally, I think it would be <laughs> probably not the right effect for this part, but let's just pretend it is. Uh, I think it's maybe a little harsh. So let's pull up a really quick high pass, low pass, and we can apply that after. And it doesn't need as much high passing, but we could probably use a decent amount of low passing. You'll see every time I do that, this little guy here spins, or if I was to change something in Rvox, all of these would spin because it's processing the plugins in succession. So let's listen to this. And you'll see when this is yellow, that means it's bypassed. When it's white, it means it's on. Here's one thing about this. The trick to this is that 
when you have a mono file, you can only apply mono effects to this. For example, if we try to apply a stereo effect, let's just go ahead and grab an instance of maybe Verb Suite. And I wanted to add this after, and I wanted to make it crazy, crazy wet just on this part. Um, you can see that the reverb is being printed into the file. As you can see, we all of a sudden have all these dynamics, peaks, and valleys here. Uh, the issue, of course, is that this is a mono file. Therefore, these plugins, uh, even if they are stereo plugins, they only print to the file in a mono way. So uh, that's no bueno. So my trick is that, let's delete these things that I'm definitely not going to put on the vocals here. Okay, but let's say let's say we had this passage and we did want to put uh, some sort of stereo effect on it. Here's the trick there. Uh, in Cubase, you can right click, render in place, render settings, boom. Channel settings only, um, and just hit render. This is quickly going to make a stereo iteration of this file. It's kind of a cool little Cubase hack. Uh, I'll just toss that up there. Um, I'll bring this up. And now, check this out. Let's add some delay. All of a sudden, boom, F7, uh, repeater. And let's wait for that to process. Uh, and we can see already that there are differences in the left and the right on these waveforms. This will be stereo. Cool, let's bring that mix up and really exaggerate this effect. Waiting for it to process. Okay, that sounds like we just got on some sort of terrible carnival ride, but you get the point. Let's delete this and back up because I'm not actually gonna do that. And let's look at some other places we can have fun with this. Uh, let's see here, in this third passage of the song. So actually I wanna show you, I wanna show you guys how this transitions, right? Like, let's look at going from, you know, one passage to another and artistically just saying to yourself, you know, instead of writing all of these automation lines or whatever, a lot of times you can just grab the region and apply what you want to it as the part changes. So you can see on this part, I did exactly what I almost did over here, except I actually liked the effect. I printed this down using the um, render in place. Oh, get rid of that guy. Uh, using render in place. And then I created this stereo file. And once I had that stereo file, I started applying stereo effects. This is great on vocals, but I mean, it's great on everything. We can bounce around in this project and find spots where I did this in other places as well. Um, there's really not a bad moment on this EP. Okay, let's check this out. Let's get some sort of lead going on here. All right, very Shreddy Van Halen. Uh, Shreddy Cougar? Shred a stare, very Shred Flintstone. All right, so stereo delay plus a little bit of, um, actually a lot of bit of distortion. Uh, we can hear what this sounds like naturally. Okay, not bad. One thing about this plugin is that it actually rolls off some bottom end. So if I wanna bring something and kind of give it like a different timbre and also make it not take up or not occupy as much room in the low end of the mix, which we all know is kind of precious real estate, you can use this uh, one knob driver. It's a really dumb, simple plugin, but it sounds good. I mean, it, 
It sounds good when it sounds good because it definitely has its own very specific voice. And if that's getting a little bit crispy on top, grab any high pass, low pass you want. I actually just really like this Cubase one um, because, guys, I just use my ears. Like, I don't want to, I'm not going to sweat it, you know? I'm going to roll off some top and maybe a touch more bottom, but just to get rid of those high, high crispies, and then we should be good. How fun and easy is that? Like, instead of having to write a bunch of automation and do all this crazy stuff, like, why not? Inst why not instead of putting compression on a as a whole on our inserts, why don't we actually treat each passage creatively, independently? I think it. I think it's just the artist deserves us to do that. Uh, let's see what I did here. It looks like I did something kind of parallel. Cool. And then this is probably the dry. It's not like you care. So as you can see here, this is an awesome way to do parallel effects. Uh, let's see what it did. Oh, this is awesome. I want to show you this. Boom. Grab multiple regions. Boom. Hit F7. Boom. Uh, we can affect all these at once. I'm saying boom a lot. Don't mind. All right, so let's like mess with it. Um, let's put on telephone and you're gonna see that boom, it's processing zero out of five and it's gonna go through the full gamut here. And when it's done, it will have applied the exact same effect. So let's say you have your vocals or you have a lead line or you have whatever. It's cut up into multiple regions, but it's all part of the same vibe. It's all part of basically the same creative moment. Just grab them all. Um, if you want them to be all the same and you totally can do that and then you don't have to like try to copy and paste settings and stuff which we all know we're always looking for more efficient ways to enhance our workflow uh not create more work i mean just like that we're done and then i'll pop it back and i don't have to watch it like it'll process on its own i can close that and i know that it's going to be done um i don't know let's see if i can prove that Totally. See, it's still going. Love that. Love that. Thank you, Cubase. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Steinberg. How sick is that? I love that. So anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you guys this deal. Um, I'm using it a ton. It's a new feature. It's only existed for a few months in Cubase since 9.5. Uh, I don't know if other, I know that other DAWs can obviously apply effects to regions. I don't know that any of them have found such an elegant way to do it. So with that, let's just, uh, let's send this out. Let's send uh, some random passage here. This EP is so good. I can't wait till it comes out. So good. <laughs>